Hey, what's up, guys? Toogie here, back again with another episode of my Toronto Blue Jays franchise mode series. And today, we begin our seventh season at the helm of the Blue Jays. Now, when we take a look at what we've accomplished so far, again, we didn't immediately look to rebuild, and that shows by having six straight postseason appearances, including a World Series victory. But yet again, we find ourselves, especially after a few years ago, deciding that, hey, we're going to look to kind of retool and maybe now start the rebuild. We're at that point where a lot of roster turnover continues to happen. And uh, yeah, no different leading up to this episode. So much has happened. We have so much to get to. Here's the problem. With everything that we've done... I don't even know how to recap it. So here's some of the trades that we've made, uh, including getting rid of the likes of Andreas Arias, Richard Urena, Diego Liriano, Mike Sororka is gone, uh, Montanez and Chavez as starting pitchers. Free agency-wise, we've signed a bunch of players to fill out the roster. There's been a lot. So we are going to recap everything with this team before getting into it. So rotation-wise, Hunter Green is our new ace moving forward. 24 years old, 89 overall, actually an 86. We'll see what happens in that regard. But with the A potential, I'm intrigued to see what he can do. We had to choose between a lot of different players. Money was a factor. We ended up going with Hunter Green. Zach Eflin is still here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get rid of him anytime soon. He's only 29. The man who pretty much single-handedly won us a World Series is still here and will start off in the second spot in the rotation. Henry Murillo is third. Need a pretty big season out of him, but still young, 23 years old. B potential. A legitimate 83 overall as well, so he'll get better. Andreas Vasquez is in the fourth spot. B potential, 24 years old and 82. And a real, uh, Rolando Villalobos is in that fifth spot. A potential at 23 years old and 81 overall. The bullpen is still looking pretty damn solid. We have Bill Snowden, who's actually a closer, but he has pretty good stamina. He's going to be the long reliever. Jeff Bergman, Jordan Hicks, Jerome Herman, or German, perhaps, Chad Bennett, Tony Dennison, and James Hu as the closer. Uh, the 24-year-old South Korean. Intrigued to see what he can do. Uh, you look at somebody like a Tony Dennison as the setup man. You can see why with that clutch rating. And then from there on out again, Chad Bennett's looking pretty damn good. German's still looking pretty good. Jordan Hicks, one of the veterans of the staff at 27 years old. And then a the 22-year-old Bergman out of Hawaii. I'm really excited to see what this team can do. Again, a younger team. We're not the best on paper, but there is potential here. And you can't tell me that this team couldn't deliver. Uh, down in AAA as well. We'll go through the top 50 prospect list, but I mean, just look at that pitching staff. Now, in fairness, last year, both the Bison and the Fisher Cats did very well, and I would expect the same because, holy shit, look at that. That's absolutely absurd. We get to the lineup, and here's where it gets interesting. This is the squad for the season. Leading off, left fielder Victor Robles, 26 years old. Still has the day potential. I mean, just ridiculous attributes. An 86, but yeah, a monster in terms of just being that well-rounded. Bo Bichette in the second spot, now at 26 years old. An 89 overall, a legitimate 89 overall. We have Vlad Jr. in that third spot. It speaks for itself as far as his attributes, his quirks. It all speaks for itself. An absolute monster. And Francisco Mieya still here as the starting catcher now at 28 years old. We might want to hope that the future comes along, or at least we get someone in the system who might be able to rival him a few years down the road. DH Martin Santana still here. Excited to see what he can do now at 23 years old. Leody Tavares is still here. He'll be the starting center fielder. Now at 25, the guy I'm most excited for, Ryan Dahl, the 20-year-old, has made the Major League lineup. I'm super excited for this guy. The second we drafted him, I was intrigued to see what he could do. I'm really pumped and excited for what the switch-hitting Dahl might be able to do this season. Starting third baseman, Zach Cassidy, 24 years old, but still has B potential. 
very versatile as well. We used him as a backup first baseman last year. Uh, he gets to go ahead at third. And then Andy Wales will be the starting second baseman. So much like Ryan Dahl, I'm very intrigued to see what he can do. It was the question of do we keep Urena and Arias, maybe get rid of Cassidy. I stuck with Cassidy. We'll see if that is the right decision rather than keeping one of the two more established players. But Cassidy looked phenomenal last year. The 289 average with the 347 on base. Well, the other two weren't exactly lights out. So we went with Cassidy for this season. On the bench, we have Jamie Cruz, who in fairness is a pretty strong catching prospect. Daryl Delabate, who we, I think we drafted a long time ago at this point now. He's now 23 years old. Austin Blackburn is the depth option in the outfield. Intrigued to see what he can do if he gets some time this year. And Pedro Santos at third. Uh, not the best option in terms of potential, but you look at the contact and the vision, uh, the bench, you might not have the highest overall numbers, as uh, AAA and AA is not yet set. We'll take a look at that in a moment. You might not have the highest overall numbers coming off of the bench, but I think we're in a pretty damn good spot. And Mike Soroka, by the way, I expected to be a free agent. So with that, Right now, we're showing up as the 10th best team. 5th in speed, 1st in contact, 15th in power, 16th in pitching, and 28th in defense. You look at the Yankees who are still up there. The Red Sox have slipped a little bit. Baltimore are going to be battling back. It'll be interesting to see how the AL East uh, ends up you know, panning out. I was going to say playing out. Panning out works too. So as we get a look at the top prospects, I mean, yeah. Rosado, Villalobos, who technically won't be on that list much longer. In fairness, there are a couple of these guys who probably shouldn't be on the list anymore. We have quite a few representatives. Little, Mathis, Stevens. It's, it's looking ridiculous, but of course you would expect it to as we continue to cycle out players. We develop players. We wait until it's the right time to get rid of them. We send them on for other prospects. Rinse and repeat. The prospect factory setup has worked so well for us. And that has continued. So as we get ready to go here again, Prince, you're terrible at discovering pitchers, but I don't really care. I think we're good to go. And uh, we will set up the scouts. We are good to begin the season. The draft is in 69 days. Let's see what we can do. We start off our season against Kansas City. It's a 9-3 loss. Uh, Bergman actually gets the loss. Would have thought, you know, with the loss, that heavy of a loss that it would have been the starting pitching? Apparently not. So the bullpen falls apart on us in that uh, in that first day. It was Biden? I don't know if Biden accidentally didn't search clutch. It's fine if he didn't. We don't have time to waste. We lose 5-1 to Kansas City. At the very least, we don't get swept to begin the season. So positivity and optimism, I do suppose. I'm just waiting for the alert about setting up the AAA lineup as we actually battle back. And uh, have a winning record at this point. Three straight wins. Vasquez and Bergman. So there we go, Bergman. Not bad. A decent bit of vengeance for you after a rough start previously. In fairness, it wasn't a start. It was a relief appearance. You get what I'm saying. Uh, let's take a look here. We lose to Texas. Uh, AAA. They actually have too many players. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look. Why do you have too many players? Let's see, you have, okay, first baseman, you're fine. Second, third, short, okay. Uh, let's send down Anthony Phillips to double A and Arabu to single. And just like that, good to go, beautiful. Uh, we'll send this extra game against Boston. Dahl, we're going to keep active. Uh, the Fisher Cats, we will auto-fix their lineups, and we end up beating Boston, not bad. Pitching-wise, we'll be moving over to lefty clutch. We've done fairly well in drafting. We typically don't end up with a ton of game changers, but you look at like last year's first pick, uh, that being Buster Couture, and what he's able to do in AAA this season, we'll see. I'm actually going to have to double check to make sure that he's in the lineup. You know, now's as good a time as any. Let's take a look. AAA, he is in the lineup. They haven't started the season yet. McGrath, Garcia, and Castilla. So those are the only two that we're worried about. But we do have Zapata there, so okay, for the most part, that lineup's looking good. And then double AOIs, ooh, Wayne Armas. And here's the thing, of course, quite low. I'm going to trust the way it's set up the lines for the moment. Uh, but we do have some of the members of the top 50 list on the bench. 
as we split a couple of games against Boston. Not bad. Let's go lefty command. Again, wish there was an easier way to do this, but there really isn't. And this has been a uh, tried and tested method for us to find success in the draft. So as tedious as it is, and I'm sure it's not the most exciting thing, like, okay, yeah, and here, watch me switch this for the fifth time. You know, you, you got to do it. You got to do what you got to do to make sure you end up with a solid draft, which, again, we have typically done. So let's send these next two games against Tampa. We complete the sweep, 8-5 and five on the season. Hang the uh, hang the banner in the rafters now. We're good to go. Plan the parade. We are clearly going to win it all this year <laughs> off the back of an 8-5 and five start. Uh, we'll play our first game here of a four-game series against Baltimore. It's a 5-2. Was that 5-2? I don't even know if it was. <laughs> I don't even know if it was. I, lo I looked at the score, and then I looked at the record, and I'm like, I don't remember what the hell the score was. Uh, let's go arm strength and fielding for catchers. Arm strength, fielding, beautiful. Setting all this up. Love to do it. Think it'd be tedious. It kind of is, but not really. I don't know. I kind of enjoy it. Uh, next two games against the O's. We split those two. And the uh, deciding game here. Game four. Weird to have a four-game series that ends on a Monday, but okay. Uh, Catching-wise, let's go... Yeah, power and contact next. That's fine. All catchers have been discovered. Well, shit. Infield-wise, let's go... Our, eh, fielding and arm strength. Fielding and arm strength. Do we have all catchers from this uh, run as well? We do. Jeez, okay, so this is apparently not going to be... A great draft for catchers, at least for those two regions. So, interesting way to set that up there. Let's go to the next two days. We end up losing that game to Baltimore. We take the first game against Cleveland, 11-7 on the season. Uh, let's go speed and contact. Speed and contact. And catcher-wise, uh, fielding and arm strength. Infield, fielding, and arm strength. Because you never know when you'll get a shortstop or a third baseman with an absolute cannon. As we end up sweeping Cleveland, they're off to a pretty rough start. We're at 13-7 and seven now on the year. Let's go power contact, power contact, speed and contact, speed and contact. Beautiful, quick and easy. Starting a four-game series against the White Sox. First two games, we win the first. Sean Arthur goes down. For a couple of days in triple a we end up taking the first two games not bad not bad 15 and 7 i'll be intrigued post draft where we stand when it comes to uh, when it comes to rankings as far as how we're developing not only of course just the season standings to begin with but where we are standings wise i think will be really interesting uh, or not standings wise uh, development wise of course uh, next two games against Chicago, we end up splitting that series. Fairly disappointing. Outfield-wise, we don't have too much left to do. Speed and contact. Speed and contact. And then outfield-wise, arm strength and fielding. Outfield-wise, arm strength and fielding. It would be easier if we had, like, a defined weakness within the organization, but because of the players that we've just been able to continue to bring in, we really don't. So, otherwise, scouting, it would be a little bit easier. Uh, we'll go power contact there, power contact, speed and contact, speed and contact. So, we're almost done with the scouting, at the very least, in terms of discovery. 39 days until the draft. So, for example, here, we're going to go. So, Prince... Let's have you take a look at Greg Chow. Why the hell not? And Sashin, you'll take a look at Clifford Lutz. And here we need to go power contact and power contact. And we're just about done there. We end up losing our second game to Cleveland. We end up winning the third, though, 10 to 1. So we avoid the sweep, 18 and 12 on the year. Uh, Hutchins is 22 and 4 plus years away. We're not going to bother. Ochoa is pretty, I mean, he's what, two years away? 2025 is next year. Jesus. Okay. So, uh, yeah, 20 years old and you're ready next year. We'll definitely take a look at you. Uh, and Pippinger. Pippinger. Hell of a name. Now, as we now have every scout taking a look, Tom Bruntlett and Francisco Feliz will be the next two that we look at here. As we play our final game of April, it's a massive 17-5 to victory over the Astros, uh, we'll continue that series. We end up winning the next game 4-1 to one as well. 
Uh, we have a slight injury down at double A, which is unfortunate. We'll just go auto on that front. 20 and 12 on the season. Arthur Lyles, 22, ready next year. Let's take a look. Feliz, I want a full scouting report. Although, granted, I think that ETA dropped a little bit, but that's okay. Now we'll take a look at Dave Frazier and Chris Morales. As we continue onward, we end up winning that next game against Houston and losing the first game of a three-game set against the Angels. Let's see, 21, four-plus years away. Ah, that's, that's rough. Tom Turley, I think we're going to avoid you. We will take a look at Joe Gonzalez next. Clifford Lutz, let's get a full report. Virgil Kurtz, 20 years old, four years away, we'll take a look. And Medina, no thank you. 25 years old and four plus years away. In fairness, it makes you think that that ETA could change. But... Maybe not, and if it doesn't, then we just wasted time. So we'll pass, and we'll take a look at David Urbina. Next two games here against Los Angeles, we at least avoid the sweep. 22 and 14 on the season. Allen, 22 and ready next year. We'll find out for sure about that. Ray Diaz, the catcher. Uh, would it be Dicion, I'm guessing? Good old Robert Dicion. And Norman Swan, hell of a name. Hell of a name. Not too bad. Actually, you know what? Now's a good time to take a look. We are a half game back of Baltimore. No development in the sense that we're still 10th ranked. But we're doing we're doing okay. The draft is in 30 days. Let's take a look. So rotation-wise, Hunter Green, 4-1 with a 3-3-1 ERA. And that'll actually lead me to take a look here. Around the league, ERA. Sean Newcomb at a 1-6. Okay, so anything... Under a three is pretty damn good, and obviously there are a couple of names that stand out. So anything under a three right now is phenomenal. Anything under a two is ridiculous. So Hunter Green having a pretty good season in terms of ERA. Zach Eflin's been great. The win-loss record isn't exactly tremendous, but the ERA is phenomenal. Henry Murillo's having a good season. Andreas Vasquez has been great. And Villalobos has been solid. So our starting rotation is tremendous. Uh, Bill Snowden, though, is a long reliever. That's been a bit of a disaster. Bergman hasn't been great. Jordan Hicks has been tremendous. Jermon's been okay. Chad Bennett's been a disaster. Uh, Dennison's been okay. James Who is all right. So the bullpen struggling a little bit more than I was hoping. Uh, Lineup-wise, Robles, 266 average. He's doing all right. Bichette's killing it. Uh, Bichette's actually, he has better production numbers than Junior. <laughs> Mieja's doing well, Santana's still doing well. I mean, 228 average is a bit low, but when he hits the ball, he, he delivers. Tavares has been phenomenal. Ryan Dahl's been great. Zach Cassidy's been great. And Andy Wales has been okay, too. Overall, feeling pretty good about this. Delabate, Blackburn, and Santos have all been great. So really, our biggest concern is the bullpen thus far as we lose 5 nothing to Detroit. Take a look at Kirby Groves, great name, Wesley Barron. I still do wonder about guys like Eddie Cairo. Well, not Eddie Cairo, for example. Like a 21-year-old with like Trujillo. It's like, if we scout him, is that ETA going to change drastically? You know, Is it worth scouting someone who doesn't look like they're ever going to develop because that ETA could change? Uh, James McCann we'll take a look at. Bigaroa, DeAndre Doss. There are some strong players here towards the top. And Erolano. A lot of 80 potential guys to sort through here. We're 26 days out from the draft. Rosado still injured down in double A. As we start a three-game series against the Yankees. Not exactly on the brightest note, though. We'll take a look at Castillo, Turner, Josh Watley. And Tom Hutchings, you know, I'll take a look at him. He's one of those interesting ones where will he uh, turn over and have that ETA change? So we get swept by the Yankees and head into a two-game series against the Mets. Trevor Goto, Henry Murillo. Yeah, see, I mean, 25. That's just Unless that ETA was next year and he is just the greatest player ever. No, I'll use him as the example. The third baseman, Murillo, we'll use him as the example to see if there's anything crazy there in terms of change. So we end up splitting those two games against the Mets. Let's take a look. Mario, no. <laughs> no, it hasn't changed. So there we go. There's my answer. Uh, Castillo, we pretty much have a full report on. We should be fine there. Uh, Carlton Wesley, 
we'll take a look at. Three years away at 22. Yavino we'll take a look at. Nishi we'll also take a look at. Whoops, Yavino we'll take a look at. And uh, let's go for Fernando Trujillo. Next two games, or at least next game, we end up losing to Baltimore again. Every two days seems to be that, uh, that way to go for me. So it just sucks. It's like, okay, let's send two games, and we're right back to the screen. But it is what it is. Gustavo Diaz, the next guy that we scout. Next two games, Hunter Green gets a bruised arm. It's all right. We end up losing two out of three. We're back to 25 and 22, so that strong start comes crashing down a bit. Throughout the month of May, Claudio Rodriguez will take a look at Carvajal. Let's get more for um, a more in-depth report on you, Kurt Lemons. By the way, how the hell did I not notice that name the first time, Kurt Lemons? Jesus, that is tremendous. So we split the first two games against Minnesota, four-game series there. Uh, Kevin Bassett's worth looking at. Bruntland three years away, not so much. Taylor Franklin and John Elliott. And Freddie Chavez as well. How many 80s are left? Jesus. This could be one hell of a draft, unless unfortunately the majority of these players end up off the board quickly. So we lose three out of four, three straight to Minnesota, and we're very close to being a 500 ball club. Leland Valentine, Carlos Mendoza will avoid. Emmett Tucker, let's take a look at you. Cecil Morton, Tom Turley, great name but not worth scouting. Dwayne Sisk. Also great, and Craig Weaver at third. As we are less than two weeks away from the draft, unfortunately this month has not been kind to us in the slightest. Uh, Emmett Tucker, I'm not going to bother with a full report. Anaya, we'll check out. Uh, Robbie Musser, unfortunately not that great. Mendoza's not that great. Cecil Morton, we'll get a full report on you, at least get it to Green Bar. Is there anybody else here? Uh, let's see, Hernandez and Bruntlitz. No, you're three years away at 24. That's not going to happen. Is there anybody else here in terms of the 80s? Acevedo, the outfielder. Granted, he's in the 75s. So, Tom Turley, 21, four plus years away. I guess I'll we'll get a little bit of info on him. Ten days out from the draft. We at least end up taking two out of three against New York, so a decent bounce back. It'd be nice to hit 30 wins. I'd like to think that we will. We're eight days out from the draft. Medina, again, is 25. Turley, let's get a full report on you. Spencer, 22, four-plus years away, not going to happen. Musser, Valentine. Let's hear more about Hernandez. Mendoza will avoid. Lopez and Bruntland will avoid. Anaya might be worth it. That'll bring us down to the 75s. So let's take a look at Acevedo, the outfielder. Which I swear I already said that to him, but it's fine. And Cleveland, no, I'm, I'm good. My roster's set for the moment. I'll let you know if I need anything. As we end up taking two out of three against Miami, we do hit the 30 win mark, which is pretty nice. And let's see. Back down. A couple of guys went up to the 80s, which is pretty nice. Going to be down in the 75 range, though. I want confirmation on Acevedo. What else do we have? Burke we'll take a look at. Take a look at Richie Lytle. And Dominguez. Benny Clark is someone we'll definitely get an eye on as well. As we start a series against Boston. Jesus, Castano is hurt as well. So in double A, they're, they're hurting to say the least. We end up... What do we end up doing? Taking the first two against Boston, which is nice. The draft is in four days. We'll see what we can do once we get there. A little bit of optimism. Let's see, Burke, you know what, you're in green at least. Uh, Moreno, let's take a look at you. Anybody else? Kevin Doby, get a further look at you. Victor Ojeda, and Benny Clark. These will be one of the final uh, batch of prospects we can look at as we lose the next two to the Red Sox. So we split that series. And this is pretty much it. The final group of prospects that we're going to be checking out here before the draft. Dante Gonzalez will be one. Napoleon Ross has a great name, but we're going to avoid him. Do we have any other 75s that are worth checking out? Nick Murphy, 100% is worth checking out. Uh, Neil Lint is fringe. Wow, there's a lot of 70s. Holy shit. 
There's so many 75s. Okay. Uh, let's sort this now by ETA. And let's take a look. So you have Luis Diaz, the 20-year-old, Victor Tejada. My God, I need the 75s at least. So Diaz is a 75. Who else? You have Eddie Blanco, Avila, Pina. You have Hodge. Anybody else? Where does the 2025 range stop? Okay, so it stops with Joe Gonzalez. Right. So Murphy at second. I would rather look for position players. There's a lot of pitchers here. So we'll take a look at Isaiah Matlock. And Robbie Capel might be worth it. We need another 75. We need one more 75 as a position player because there are a whole lot of pitchers in this draft. And there isn't anybody else. So we'll take a look at Luis Diaz next. And with that, we are pretty much good to go to the draft. It'll be after we sim this next game against Washington. Let's do it. It's draft time. Here we go, the 2024 draft. Let's we'll see what we can do. Is JJ Joyner, a catcher, goes number one overall. We will have the 28th pick. Someone like Nick Murphy's off the board, too. Emmett Tucker, a lot of familiar names, of course. We'll see what we can get here. So as far as players with good accuracy, there's quite a few. Uh, there has to be that one, though, that really stands out. So Francisco Feliz is a solid uh, relief pitcher, solid closer. Someone worth keeping an eye on here for sure. Uh, Acevedo in the outfield, decent contact and power. Vision discipline's a little bit low, but the fielding and the speed, very solid from him. Don't know if he's worth the first round option. Gonzalez, good contact. The power drops off a bit. Vision and discipline has decent speed, and decent fielding. Nothing too crazy. Elmer Ochoa. Elmer's not looking too bad. It's a hell of a name. Contact is okay. Solid power. Vision and discipline, fielding. He's pretty well-rounded. He might be my favorite so far just for the power and the stealing. So I'm thinking thinking Elmer Ochoa or Feliz, probably my two favorites thus far. Isaiah Matlock, eh, in terms of in terms of anything hitting-wise, it's just not there for him. Enrique Hernandez, okay, but nothing too crazy, especially with that really low control. Alexis Anaya, another starting pitcher. Again, the hits a little bit low, controls a little bit low. Cecil Morton as a closer, looking okay, but I still prefer Elmer over anybody else I've seen thus far. Nishii, not really there either, at least not first round caliber for me at least. Clifford Lutz, definitely not, too many 60s. He's not terrible, but still, we could find somebody better. Tom Turley, again, 60s, 50 in there, no thank you. Castillo. Nope. Bruntlet. Bruntlet. That's also a no. Kirby Groves, the outfielder. No. Nah, definitely speed fielding first. So that's not going to happen. Carlton Wesley, another outfielder. Strong draft for outfielders. Great contact. Great vision. Carlton Wesley's not bad. My problem, though, is he's 22 and he's four plus years away. Martin Moreno. Good contact. Good vision. Good discipline. I just wish the power, if the power was a little bit higher, I'd take him right now. I really would, but he might be a decent pickup later on in the draft. James McCann, just not that good at the plate. Kevin Bassett, second baseman, same issue. Craig Crow. Or not Craig, Greg Crow. Sorry, I completely misread that. Greg Crow. Neat. Not that great, though. Eddie Cairo, also not that great. Victor Ojeda, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think we're going to be taking Elmer at this at this rate. Dwayne Sisk, okay, but nothing great. Josh Watley, like I need to see a strong, a strong bat here more than anything. Luis Diaz, also not too bad, but with how many dominant pitchers end up being in the league, we need to prioritize. I'd say, and it's it's weird saying that now, right? Like I don't mind looking for pitchers. Uh, but out of everyone we scout, I'm definitely looking at taking a position player first. It's going to take a really, you know, a, a top-notch gem of a pitcher to make it worth it. Harold Burke, good contact, very well-rounded, very well-rounded. I like him. Right field, second and third at 6'4". 
21 years old, four plus years away. Benny Clark, not really feeling it. Craig Weaver, really good contact. Craig Weaver's looking pretty good too. <laughs> Out of the Netherlands, who would have thought? Weaver's looking okay. David Urbina, good power. Contact, vision, discipline's a little bit low, and it just doesn't help out with the speed. Henry Murillo, not feeling it either, especially with high injury risk. He's 25, too. That was the one guy in our, our test run. Uh, Kevin Doby, eh, well-rounded, not bad. I'm going to say no there, though. Tom Hutchins, no. DeAndre Turner, also no. Eh, he's not bad. Again, I wish the vision and discipline was a little bit higher. And that brings us out of the green. So... And of everyone I saw, Elmer Ochoa, he's 20 years old. He's scheduled to be ready next year. Well-rounded. I like the power. Let me know if this is the guy that you would take. But it's who I'm going with, the outfielder, Elmer Ochoa. The 20-year-old will be our first pick in this draft. And we'll see who's still available here as we have the 19th pick of the second round. And we only have two? No, we have way more than two. Okay, so that's good. How many green uh, bars do we have left? A lot. So that's nice. Uh, so, we, again, we have Dante Gonzalez. Good contact. Gonzalez isn't that bad. Good contact. Vision, discipline, decent fielding, decent speed. Gonzalez isn't terrible. Matlock is well-rounded, but a master of none as the catcher. Acevedo, uh, well-rounded, definitely fielding, and uh, just speed first. I like how Gonzalez is a little bit more well-rounded in terms of uh, his ability at the plate. Enrique Hernandez is pretty damn good outside of that low control. Nishii is eh, a little bit weaker. I think we're still going to focus on a position player. Martin Moreno. Again, I really like the contact, the vision, the discipline. I think Moreno might be my favorite right now because there are so many other outfielders available. Ray Diaz, one of two half-decent catchers left that we're aware of. And Henry Murillo, high injury risk. You know, I, we already took an outfielder. I think I'm going to go for Martin Moreno here, the 20-year-old. He's four-plus years away, and we'll try to get an outfielder in the third round. Hopefully one of them happens to be left, or at least another outfielder. Uh, so we have another option there. And we'll see if anyone's available down the line here as we get to the third round. Let's see what we can do. Who's still on the board? There are two outfielders left. That is it. We have Wesley. Again, really good contact. Vision. Man, yeah. The fact that Carlton Wesley just fell to us, that's tremendous. That is tremendous. Yep, no doubt. No doubt. The 22-year-old, I mean, ah, he's four-plus years away. I mean, it's got to be one of them. And even though Wesley's older, I mean, the stats are just so much better. I know it says he's four-plus years away, but damn. I, don't, I can't imagine what stats are going to be that low. If anything, he's going to be D potential. If anything, he's going to be D potential. That's going to be locked in and confirmed. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, though, I'm at the point where I'd have to sit here and go best guess anyway. I mean, it's like you have someone like Alvarado. Who, ooh, in fairness, Johnny Alvarado. And then Gustavo Diaz, not so much. Because of that 55 and a couple of 60s. You know, in fairness, I think the game plan just changed. I think Johnny Alvarado is the guy to take here. It comes down to him or Wesley, and I really like Wesley, but I think that potential is going to be extremely low, and then anybody else we know nothing about. We've taken an outfielder, we've taken an infielder. I'm going for Johnny Alvarado. The stats are just too damn good. Uh, and if Wesley's still there, which he is not, he just went to Baltimore, go figure, uh, we would have taken him. Now, though, we're at the point where it's best guess. It really is. So catching-wise, you have three prospects left. Dave Sobshack is the only other guy I'd consider taking. Again, attribute-wise, it's there's nothing really to go off of. So we could take a catcher in Sobshack. We could take Jose Perez or Carmine, Mar uh, Carmine Montoya, excuse me, uh, Joffrey Meza or Jeffrey Meza and Juan Castillo. Could work. Pretty much it's looking at, okay, what do we want, right? And we've taken a pitcher. We've taken a starting pitcher, an outfielder, and an infielder. I think now we're going to take a chance on a reliever. 
I'm going to take the risk on D'Angelo Hodge. Why not? Let's see what we get. Maybe we get someone who's close to being ready as a relief pitcher. But like I said, at this point, it's all best guess. We don't have info on these guys. So we have a starting pitcher, a reliever. Catcher-wise, Dante Dudley, great name, but no. Jose Perez at first. Again, you can't go off of anything there in the scouting report. Meza. Could work. As far as anyone with a half decent ETA. I mean, I'm still liking the draft, though, with Ochoa, Moreno, Alvarado, and Hodge. We look at that lower. Actually, I don't care about the uh, ETA. I care about the age. So we have Gary Nomo, a closer. Meza as a second baseman. Might not be the worst to take. A Canadian, at least. You know, he's Canadian. Why the hell not? Jeffrey Meza is going to be our fifth round selection. And then here in the sixth round, our final pick. We do not get to make one. There are there are no more players left. So there you go. That does it. It's going to be a five-player draft for us. Moment of truth. And outside of making the right call with Elmer Ochoa, it was a weak draft. But holy shit, did we hit. Elmer frickin' Ochoa, 20 years old, 73 overall, 90A potential. The one issue is that low durability, but Elmer Ochoa is the real goddamn deal. The fact that we got this guy so late in the first round, yeah, he's practically MLB ready now. We will sign him. Maybe he spends one year down in AAA, but Elmer Ochoa... Good lord, what a pickup that is. Man, good stealing rating as well. The fielding is not tremendous, but yeah. I mean, vision, discipline, clutch needs to be work on, uh, worked on. But if he hits the ball, you're golden. You're golden. Especially if he hits it into the gap. He has the speed to follow up on that power. Elmer Ochoa, a phenomenal pickup. From there, we have to talk about the rest of this draft, which is kind of meh. Uh, Moreno, D potential, just didn't work out. Just didn't work out. Hate to see it. Everything else, I mean, decent contact, but I mean, that D potential is just not going to develop. Uh, Johnny Alvarado, though, for a C potential isn't that bad, but with the amount of pitching prospects we have, we just have no space for him. Uh, D'Angelo Hodge is a disaster, and Mesa, unfortunately, isn't that great. So this is the first time ever, I think, that I'm only going to be taking one player from the uh, draft. But J.J. Joyner was the first overall pick. 49 overall, 22 years old. Brutal. Absolutely brutal for Tampa. Now, they did follow up with Francisco Feliz, who's great. Uh, Sisk, a really good project. Uh, Caruso, not so much. So I'm intrigued here, as I'm going to look. Again, just because there's that high potential, it doesn't mean anything. It depends on what these players look like. Quentin Reyes for the Red Sox is looking good. I'm mainly looking at players that I was considering. As uh, Baltimore ended up with Wesley, who for a C potential guy is okay. But case in point, again, it still wasn't the strongest draft. A lot of teams struggled. But the fact that we delivered and we absolutely hit Elmer Ochoa. Tremendous. And I think we can walk away from this draft in a pretty damn good mood. Let's go ahead and continue on with the season, though. Let's get to the All-Star break, as we normally do. We have four games here against Tampa. As we have uh, lost the first two, we end up splitting that series. Three games against Baltimore. As Leotis Tavares breaks his shin and is going to be out for two to three months, we end up losing the series as well. That is a brutal injury for us to lose Tavares in that way. It does mean Blackburn will get some playing time. Decent chance here. It's either Hurd or Montoya. And uh, I guess we'll be calling up Jeffrey Hurd. Add him to the 40 man. And then down in the old double A's. Let's go ahead and call up Esquivel. Bump him up to triple. Double A wise, we still have our four. So that's perfect. And then down in, uh, well, actually, in fairness, double A is looking a little bit weak. Two, three, four. They're weak elsewhere in terms of call ups. Let's go ahead and give them back a Rabu. And I think 
they were missing a pitcher, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, here, let me check. Just so, because, you know, of course, I don't have the AI setting this up for us. Uh, actually, they might not be. You know what, they're, they're okay with 24. So, rotation-wise, Hunter Green, you know what, in fairness, we're going to be looking at this afterwards. Hunter Green's still doing okay, though. <laughs> Zach Eflin was still killing it. The big thing, of course, here was fixing this lineup, where, again, Herd's not bad, but see potential there. So, Austin Blackburn is going to draw into this lineup. Uh, with that arm rating, he's actually pretty good to just step straight into center field. Uh, we're going to drop him to the bottom of the order but overall we're okay to have him on the team and in fairness that does allow us because of course Santana if he's non-DH he's in left that does allow us to play Ryan Dahl full time now which is pretty good uh, that means Robles will be moving over to center and Dahl will just stay in that uh, sixth spot so not bad Ryan Dahl actually benefits very well from this injury uh, which again is unfortunate if we take a look at the disabled list Tavares six home runs 25 RBIs four stolen bases a 283 average and a 331 on base he was having a really good season thankfully though we do have that young depth that can step into the lineup will auto fix the AAA lineup so Rob who already gets slightly injured uh, Panero as well picks up a bit of a knock. We take two out of three against the Braves. Uh, Michael Givens gets charged with the loss. Hello, hello, old friend there. As we'll play the next three games against Miami, we've already taken the series, and we have swept them. Up to 42 wins on the year. We have three games against Philly. They're a 500 club at the moment. Tavares is still going to be out for a bit. Franz, uh, Francisco Mieja, we'll see. As we end up sweeping Philly as well. So seven wins in a row. Not too shabby. 13-3 to in that third game. We have four games coming up against Oakland. We have a couple of games on them at the moment. We'll see what happens. We lose the first one. We win the next two. And there we go. Three out of four. We're on a good run. As bad as May was for us, June has been quite kind. We have three games here against Houston. We lose the first and the second. Will we lose the third? We won't. So we at least avoid the sweep. 49 wins. We're two weeks out from the All-Star game. We have another two-game series here with the Mets. We end up winning both of those to go over 50 wins. Four games against the struggling Royals. Let's see what we can do. We win the first, the second, the third. Three out of four is not bad. Three games against Boston. They're on 41 wins, so this is huge right here. Uh, they're not necessarily out of it. If they do well against us, that could be the catalyst to turning their season around. And we'll see what happens. We do take two out of three. And our final set of games here will be against Seattle. They're on 50 wins. What can we do? We win game one. Eric Hosmer's dealt to the White Sox for Nicky Delmonico, Taylor Rogers, and Casey Gillespie. We lose game two to the Mariners and game three. So there we go. That, that winning streak, or yeah, well, we'll call it a winning streak in a way. Uh, comes to an end. We're going to skip the home run derby because we don't have a participant. We hadn't lost a series for quite a while. Actually, in fairness, we lost to Houston. But before that, we were on a half-decent streak, really, of only like two weeks. We're doing well, though. 57-41. and 41. Perhaps a little bit better than expected. At the very least, you can look at this episode, uh, episode in a positive light, thanks to one Elmer Ochoa. As you get a look there at our rankings, second and third, we're a little bit weak. But we still have the best bullpen in the league, which is absolutely crazy as we are four games back of Baltimore so I said they took a bit of a step forward it was a little bit more of a step forward than I would have hoped as the Yankees and Red Sox have started to hit that slide a bit but Baltimore is there we are currently the top team though amongst the AL wildcard clubs uh, we'll take a look around the league here so batting average wise again anything over a 300 is phenomenal Home run leader right now is Justin Bohr in the AL. So anything over 20 are looking good. Bo Bichette at a 21, by the way. Uh, and then the big thing here, of course, well, actually, in fairness, in fairness, on base percentage. Yeah, so, of course, anything as close to a 4 as you can get. And then Benintendi's just a monster. And then ERA-wise, again, anything under a 3, you are a freak. <clears throat> we have three pitchers there. Uh, and Eflin's not that far behind. So let's go ahead 
and take a look at the team to wrap up this episode. So again, Hunter Green, phenomenal. 11 and 3 with a 2.98 ERA. Perhaps a little bit controversial to go with him as the ace. He, it's paid off. The confidence in him, he has reciprocated that in spades. He only has three pitches as a starter, but he is killing it right now. Again, up to a 93 at the moment. Phenomenal season for him. Zach Eflin, the win-loss record might not be great, but the ERA is still phenomenal. Henry Murillo has been tremendous. <laughs> Vasquez has been amazing. Villalobos doesn't have the wins-loss record, uh, but still, the fifth guy, he's still not been poor. This might be the best top-to-bottom our rotation has ever done. Bullpen-wise, Bill Snowden's up to an 84, which is great. It is through morale. Uh, the whip has gone down a bit, though, so I am okay with that. It's not tremendous, but it's not terrible. Same for Bergman, not tremendous, not terrible. Hicks, eh. German, though, has figured it out. It's weird, though, because we have the highest rate of bullpen, apparently. Uh, you can kind of see why, because of who's uh, anchoring it. But the top three struggling a bit. germain has been all right. Bennett's been pretty good. Dennison's been pretty good. And then you have James who. I'll tell you who. The best goddamn closer in baseball, apparently. Up to a 94. Jesus. Jesus. 26 saves on the season already. James who, ladies and gentlemen. James who. Things are looking up. And then lineup-wise, Victor Robles. 12 home runs, 50 RBIs, a 269 average. Solid. He's an 89 overall. Bo Bichette leading the team in home runs. He's having a tremendous season. What more do you want me to say? Junior still having a tremendous season. Might not be hitting the long ball as much, but batting average-wise, he's great. Francisco Mieja, batting average is perhaps a bit low, but the numbers otherwise are fine. He's tremendous. Martin Santana, same issue. If he hits the ball, it's great. If not, eh, but I'm still happy with him. Ryan Dahl might be my MVP of the episode. I love that. I love that it's a player that I drafted uh, that's turning out to be as good as he is he's tremendous Zach Cassidy's doing well Andy Wales has been fine uh, Blackburn though has been struggling since we put him into the lineup but I'm okay with that I'd prefer to try and let him develop a little bit more uh, although Jeffrey Hurd what, what, what do you guys think did we put in Jeffrey Hurd I think we almost have to <laughs> I think we almost have to bottom line is we might not be in first place but again despite all the changes we are still very much competitive we have another gem of a prospect coming up after the draft, and the team in general is looking good. We have a ton of depth as we'll continue to just have this team be the prospect factory, which of course is working out for us. But the big question is what kind of success will we find playoff-wise this year? Time will tell. For now, we are done here, though. I hope you did enjoy. For those of you that have been hanging around with the series, I do appreciate it again hope you enjoyed intrigued to see what any you know what feedback you might have for this episode of course as far as what we could look to do heading in to the next episode for now though we are done here you know the deal support the video support the channel check out everything in the description until next time have a good one take it easy catch you later